Hey guys, it's Amy here, and today I'm going to be talking about Station Eleven and by Emily St. John Mandel. I don't often make whole video reviews of books, but I enjoyed this one so much I just wanted to share it with you. I'm tempted to say this has taken the top spot for my favourite book that I've read so far this year. It's definitely in the top three. So let's talk about it. And as always, with these videos, there aren't going to be any spoilers, so you don't need to worry if you haven't read the book yet. This story is pre- and post-apocalyptic. We follow the characters before the end of the world, and we follow them after as well. The story begins in a theatre where the play King Lear by Shakespeare is being performed. During this performance, the main actor who's playing King Lear, his name is Arthur Leander, he dies on stage. It's not a spoiler, by the way, because it says it on the back of the book. So Arthur Leander dies and he is the main thread of this whole book. All of the characters in this book somehow relate back to him. So one of our main characters is a man named Jeevan and he is a trainee paramedic sitting in the front row of King Lear and he jumps up on stage and tries to save Arthur when he drops to the ground. Another of our main characters is a girl named Kirsten and she is a young child actress who's also in the performance of King Lear. She sees Arthur drop to the ground and it affects her throughout the rest of her life. You may be wondering where the end of the world part comes in and basically 10 or so days after Arthur Leander drops dead on stage, a outbreak of Georgian flu makes its way into America via planes and things like that. So no matter what anyone does, this outbreak of Georgian flu is incontainable and it manages to kill 99.9% .9 of the people on the planet. So most of this book is set 20 years after the outbreak of the Georgian flu and we follow groups of people who have managed to colonise and protect themselves and survive this awful destruction of the world. So I mentioned before the young girl named Kirsten who was on stage as one of the actors in the performance of King Lear when Arthur Le Leander died Died. She is actually one of our main protagonists and we follow her 20 years on once she has survived And she is now obviously a lot older and she is with a travelling symphony that performs Shakespeare in all the various towns and Colonies that they come across as they're travelling across the country for Kirsten, the memory of Arthur Leander's death is a very prominent one. She had a really good connection with him and we see the relationship of theirs through memories and flashbacks of hers. So 20 years on we see how she has spent a lot of her life collecting information on Arthur Leander. She salvages any information she can find on Arthur Leander, any old magazines, paparazzi photos, anything basically that she can find on Arthur Leander. So we've got two strands of the story already. Jeevan trying to survive just after the outbreak of the Georgian flu and we've got Kirsten 20 years later with her traveling symphony who are performing Shakespeare. That story in particular really interested me. This traveling symphony would go through towns and they came across various different obstacles on their way. I think a common thing in apocalyptic stories like this is the upsurgence of cult leaders and people who believe they have this divine power in them and they should be leading but their leadership is slightly skewed and they're really not ideal for the part of leadership. The Travelling Symphony go through a town where they come across a man named the Prophet. This Prophet is pretty horrific and we learn about his story and how he came to be in this town uh, where the Travelling Symphony come across Across him. It is amazing. I honestly can't even begin to explain how all of this is so beautifully interwoven. Emily St. John Mandel has done a fantastic job of twining these stories together. The characters are all interconnected. So we follow Jeevan, Kirsten and the Prophet, but we also follow a collection of Arthur's friends, family and ex-wives. So the only one I'm going to elaborate on now is the story of his ex-wife called Miranda. In various flashbacks and things like that we see the story of Miranda as she went from being pretty much nothing to becoming Arthur Leander's wife and then an ex-wife because he has a few ex-wives. All throughout Miranda's story we learn that she is creating a comic series graphic novel type thing named Station Eleven and this for me was one of the most beautiful and poetic parts of the book. So Miranda details the story of Station Eleven and it fits so perfectly into this book and just as I said before it just weaves in to just bring everything into this perfectness and I don't want to ruin it for you, I don't want to say what Station Eleven is all about you have to go and read it. The only thing that I can fault this book on and the only thing that I wish Emily St. John Mandel would do would be to create the comic book graphic novel of Station Eleven and have that as part of this book or as a separate thing that you can buy just to see what it would be like because I was imagining it so vividly when Miranda was talking about this graphic novel that I just wished I could just hold it and have it and just 
it was just amazing. So yeah, that was a really long rambly talk. I hope that made sense. Basically, this is one of the most beautiful novels I think I've ever read. I know I will definitely be reading it again. I was just absolutely amazed that in just over 300 pages, this book was so phenomenally amazing in, in the fact that it managed to encompass so many different characters and storylines and it, every single one of them got tied off. There was nothing that I was disappointed about. The pacing of this book was fantastic. I have read a couple of reviews since reading it that said that it was a bit slow and boring and I didn't find that at all. I actually prefer slower moving books anyway just because I think it makes it so much more realistic. Five out of five stars. It's gone into my favourites on Goodreads and I know it will be in my top 10 for next year or top 15 or whatever it is. So that's everything for this video. Let me know down below if you've read this book and what you thought about it. I would love to have a discussion with you. As always I will leave links to Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, everything down below. I hope you're all having a fantastic day and I will see you soon. Bye! I have a lot of books to show you. I said I wasn't gonna buy any more books but apparently I have.